Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. For the period between 14th and 17th century, starting with Babar, the Mughal Empire expanded beyond the previous boundaries. The Mughals were proud of their Timurid ancestry. One reason being their great ancestor had captured Delhi in 1398. Babar then became the first Mughal emperor, 1526 to 1530, in 1526, when he defeated the Sultan of Delhi, Ibrahim Lodi, at Panipat and captured Delhi and Agra. Many of the Rajputs married their daughters into Mughal families and received high positions. The Mughals extended their influence over many kings and chieftains by defeating yet not humiliating their opponents. The Mughals recruited Turkish nobles, Turanis, Iranians, Indian Muslims, Afghans, Rajputs, Marathas and others as mansabdars. Each held a mansab, meaning a position or rank. Rank and salary were assigned a numerical value called zat. The higher the zat, the more prestigious was the noble's position in court and the larger his salary. Taxes on the produce of the peasantry were the main source of income for Mughal rulers. Akbar's revenue minister, Todar Mal, surveyed crop yields, prices and areas cultivated for the period 1570 to 1580. The tax on each crop in cash was fixed on basis of this data. A revenue system ZAP was imposed wherein each province was divided into revenue circles with its own schedule of revenue rates for individual crops. Abul Fazl, one of Akbar's close friends and courtiers, on his orders wrote a three-volume history of Akbar's reign titled Akbar Nama. The empire was divided into provinces called Subas, governed by a Subadar having both political and military responsibilities. Akbar was led to the idea of sul e kul or universal peace and tolerance that did not differentiate between people of various religions.